Hello, this is James Francis and in this video I'm going to help you with a very popular question I get asked all the time by my coaching clients which is, James, can I use PLR content, which is other people's content which you've bought the rights to, in my online business? Okay, instead of creating my own content, can I use other people's content which I bought the rights to? And it's a very complex answer and I'm going to try and simplify it as much as possible but based on my 11 plus years of doing this stuff and working with hundreds of different businesses firsthand, I found that when you use PLR content, one, your refund rates are always a lot higher because you are the expert that's being portrayed in the sales copy, okay? People are buying from you because of all of the marketing before their purchasing decision, okay? And they're expecting content from you. They've developed a relationship with you, okay? And they've gotten used to your writing style and your communication style, okay? But when you give them a product with somebody else's content, with their writing style, they feel screwed over. They feel like they've been duped or uh, you know, baited and switched with something else. So their first knee-jerk reaction is email your support desk or reply to one of your broadcast emails in your email list, can I get a refund? That's their first thing because they feel duped and do you think somebody who feels duped is gonna buy anything else from you? Probably not. In my experience, that's what's happened every single time, okay? And of course, not everybody refunds. Some people just think, oh, it's okay, you know, it's not too bad. But a lot of people can tell. And most people can tell, in fact, because there's a massive difference in the writing style. So that leads me to the next point, which is, okay, so the way around that would be to rewrite that content. Of course, if it's an audio product, you can't rewrite it. So you have to re-record the audio, which, by which stage you can just do that yourself with your own product anyway. You might as well because it's going to take you the same amount of time and it's going to be unique to you, okay? Which we'll come back to in a second, which is another point. Um, and if it's a written PDF report, let's say it's 50 something pages, you have to rewrite the whole thing in your own writing style. And guess how long that's going to take? probably as long, if not longer, as it would take to rewrite what you had uh, to begin with, with your own product from scratch, you know? Yes, you can use that as a baseline if you want to. If you're not sure what to write or how the report should flow, then you can use PLR content as an idea generation machine. You know, oh, this is what these people are talking about in the PLR content, so I should probably talk about something similar. Don't copy it because this leads me on to my next point, you are not being unique. For your product to sell very well in the marketplace, people are going to be thinking, you know, if they look at my stuff, for example, they're going to be thinking, James, how is your stuff different to everything else out there? And the answer often is, if you haven't added any kind of unique element or uh, mechanism to that product, it's not going to be different. It's just going to be another copy and paste of somebody else's product. If you're taking a PLR content product or whatever, or even a, a free report or something which is PLR, and you are repurposing that, that as your own, just literally changing the name to your own name, people have already got that content from other marketers doing the same thing, especially if you're late to the game using some content which is many years old which is often the case a lot of PLR content nowadays is you know from 2012 2013 and before that as well so the content is usually outdated which is not doing a good service to your clients and customers anyway but also it's not unique to you because everyone else has got it so when you put your advertising campaign online your prospects and your audience will see that content and see uh, that they already have it so why would they click an ad for some content that they already have Right? So it doesn't make sense to do that because you're going to get low results from your advertising campaign and from the people who do click on the ad and do opt in, they're going to build a relationship with the writing style of that free content which is not yours and even if you create your own products, your paid products, there's going to be a mismatch there and they're still going to feel duped. Even if it is you in the paid product, it doesn't match up with the writing style in the free content. So it needs to be you writing the content throughout your funnel, okay? Now, of course, not everyone is good at writing content. Not everyone is good at creating content, whether it's you know writing a report or recording videos like this, or even recording PowerPoint style videos where you're you know scrolling through bullet points on the screen and maybe showing screen flow uh, screencast sections as well, where you're pointing and clicking. You know, click here, do this, do this, do this. If that's relevant to your niche, of course, not everyone's good at that. 
everyone has to learn, including you, including me. I wasn't born with the ability to record videos. I wasn't born with the ability to create content on camera like this. I've had to learn. In fact, my first few videos for the first two or three years were terrible. Nobody could understand what I was saying because I had a really thick accent, which was from uh, Birmingham in the UK, where everyone talks like this, like you can't even tell what they're saying. So if you're in the UK, you will be able to relate to that. And maybe you're laughing now because you may be from Birmingham. Hopefully I've not offended you, but that's how I used to speak. And I had to learn to change the accent by consciously thinking about that when I speak, okay? And emphasizing my words and enunciating my syllables and so on. So everyone has to learn, okay? Including you. While you're learning, you can do the best that you possibly can, but I do not recommend using PLR content. Just put out the minimum viable products, get the basic one that you can get out there, out there, and fix it from then on. You know, get it out there. You can always improve it as time goes on based on the feedback you get. If you are throwing your writer's blank, yes, use PLR content as a, uh, a, a flow, like a guideline of that flow of what to write, but not how to write it. Okay, so hopefully this has helped. Hopefully it's given you some perspective. Hopefully you can relate to the experiences I've had and the results I've gotten and showing you why it's not a good idea to use PLR content unless you're using it as a rough guide to your future content as well. All right, so have a great day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.